Hey guys, welcome back to Mayday Sun Airsoft and today we are answering the question, are zoom optics worth it in airsoft? And to answer that question, we are going to be reviewing the Vict Optics S6L PVO. But before we do, we have to prove that this is an airsoft toy. We're also gonna be using this airsoft toy here. As you can see, it is also fake. Not real, empty, and it's unsafe. So let's talk about the actual optic itself first before we talk about its gameplay viability. This optic is around 100 or 120 US dollars and is pretty much an entry level or budget friendly zoom optic for airsoft. And surprisingly, I've seen other videos where it's been able to actually handle 5.56 ammo and actually keep it zero and handle that recoil. So that being said, this thing will be able to handle airsoft no problem. It is not too heavy to be honest I, I, in terms of weight i would say it's basically the same as an eotech in terms of weight but the weight is more in the back rather than the eotech just being straight sensor on here so it, it does have the tendency to want to roll back as you can see here like this and what we actually have on here is an extended mount to make it a little bit higher but it will come with 30 millimeter weaver but we decided to go for a little bit of a higher mount because you know i like that lower third coal and this is really nice so i guess it just makes sense to go tip to butt on this thing so at the front we have a 30 millimeter lens which is really small it does come with a lens cap now if you want to put a protector on here you can either get a kill flash or you can just get one of those little scope polycarbonate circles. You can just throw it inside the lens cap and then you'll be good to go. Do be aware for those of you who do record airsoft games that this cap will get in the way of your footage. So if you're going to be using it, maybe flip it down, you know, flip it down like this so it won't get in the way of the point of view. So just be aware of that when you are using that. So in terms of the reticle, it is like a surefire L can. So if you've ever played Call of Duty and use like those uh, hybrid canted sights and you see that kind of half circle thing, that's what it kind of looks like. And it also has the little markings, which are kind of useless for airsoft, but it is a second plane LVPO. So it is an etched reticle. So the reticle is actually etched onto the glass. So it's reliable. It's not like a projection or a laser, but it is illuminatable with a green or a red setting by turning this dial over here. There's a whole size behind it, but when you zoom in to six times or whatever, the reticle will stay that same small size. So that's really nice to be able to make out your targets at long distances. Um, as you move on to the turrets here, they will not move. They do not bump around. They do not move if you try to turn them because you actually have to pop them up and then they have very, very precise clicks that you can do on the fly if you need to. And after zeroing this thing and testing it with my gas blowback rifles, even on full auto and everything, this thing just stayed on target and it did not shift at all. All right, guys, it's Mayday Sign from the future, and we're going to be testing out the zero on this Vict Optics S6. So I aim for the center, as you can see here, really, really nice and easy. Go full auto. Yeah, so for the most part, it kept its grouping. You know, I didn't really hold it really nicely, so I couldn't control the recoil. And it's always gonna go crazy when you full auto, but in terms of general grouping, very, very nice, did not lose a zero, and we just full autoed. So why don't we try it one more time after doing that? Okay, so we're gonna try it one more time after full autoing it on the three times zoom. You can see how clean this is. Let's try mounting this time. Yeah, just right on target there. All right, let's try six times. Now, mind you, I was kind of aiming up, but the general grouping is very, very consistent. And we can see that the optic did hold that zero with the exception of the actual scope itself shifting left and right like that. And that just has to do with the rings not being tight enough. So you might have to spend a little bit of time lining it up perfectly, tightening it in a star shape so it clamps down perfectly even. And if you're feeling risky, you can lock tight it so that it'll never move in your life, but I probably won't do that till later. So just be aware that you do have to mount it pretty tightly for it to not move, especially with gas blowbacks. In terms of the illumination, indoor, it's really good because even if you have not the perfect cheek well or the perfect eye position, it is very, very easy to find that dot. If you keep both your eyes open on the one time setting, you will find that dot even if you get that scope shade. And because both your eyes are open, you'll be looking at your target and you'll just see a floating dot. So you don't really need to get that precise circle sight picture inside your brain kind of thing. You just literally just put it up and it's almost as fast as my EOTech or my other red dots. 
and that's really, really surprising. When it comes to the illumination, it does lack a little bit. It is not as bright as my EOTech, for example, which is as bright as the freaking sun itself. So what that means outdoors, you can't see the color. It will just be a black etch with maybe a hint of the red or the green that you get to choose. But indoor, you'll be able to see it no problem. Now we're talking about indoor and we're talking about CQB. And what I used to think for LVPOs was that why would you ever bring a zoom optic into a CQB situation, especially in Japan where it's like, two meter engagements. And I kind of learned today is that if you get a nice quality optic like this Vict Optics, which is a true one power optic up to six, that sight picture is really fast and it's really clean. And the big circle really does help you get your target and give you really, really nice peripherals with the exception of the scope shadow. But for what it is, it's really, really nice. Like even now I'm able to just pick up the target super easy. And even if my left eye, with that glowing red dot, even if I don't have my eye lined up perfectly with this thing, I can still see the dot and I can still put it on target, even if I have the scope shape because of that illuminated dot. Now, would I use it over an EOTech or a red dot for a CQB? Probably not. The EOTech is just gonna be so much better, you know, with the zero parallax and the big window, and it's just superior to use a red dot. But if you had to use an um, LVPO because you wanna get a cool rec rifle look even indoors, 100% would recommend this thing. This is fantastic. Uh, I don't wanna reveal the other brand that I had, but the other LVPO I had, which I put on my VSR1, it was horrible. Like, I, it made me hate LVPOs, and I, I thank God that I didn't make the video on that because this has really changed my mind about it. That LVPO was a 1.2 to 6. So because that 1.2, I wasn't able to get a perfect sight picture. The eye relief was really bad. It had to be really, really close to it. This one, I can go all the way in the back of the stock and still see. I can go all the way up front and still see. You know, it's just really, really, really nice. And it's very, very crystal clear. The other one was like kind of murky. It was kind of, I just did not like it. And every time I shot that one, it would literally just shift the glass every freaking time. So on, on a freaking a VSR one, but this is goddamn. This has really changed my mind about everything. Now let's talk about the zoom a little bit. So it goes one to two to three to four to five to six. Now, obviously the more you zoom in, the more visual recoil you're gonna get. That's just physics, especially if you use blowback airsoft toys. Also, you can see on the ring itself that there's a little hole and that's for this little throw lever. So the throw lever, you just attach it on there. I can't put it on right now because of my iron sight. You just throw it on there and you'll be able to quickly change between three and one or whatever and one really, really quickly. I honestly think that the default version is fine because I don't see myself adjusting it too much on the fly. But yeah, even in six times zoom, it's a little bit hard to capture on the camera. It's super clear, it's super nice, but you do get a lot of idle sway, obviously, because of math and physics, but honestly, it's really good. I probably gonna be using this on one times and three times. Six is a little bit overkill because you won't be able to actually reach that far, but I think three times you should be okay. Especially in Japan, you can use it up to 30 meters. I think you'll be fine. In terms of gameplay viability, what kind of situation would you use this kind of optic over a red dot. For me, I think because of this, I'll finally be able to play Woodland because a lot of the time when you play outdoor, a lot of the players in Japan at least are very defensive and they don't move and they camp a lot because of one life game modes. That's just kind of the way people play. So being able to spot enemies, I think is very, very important. And putting it on that three times and being able to just kind of look, look for enemies, try and spot them. Oh, there's an aim over there. Okay, and then try and make your shots and then use the ticks to kind of go from there. I think that's what this is for. Not necessarily being people across the map, but being able to scout and be reconnaissant. But at the end of the day, mission dictates gear. So if you need to go out and do some scouting, use the LVPO. If you want to do CQB and be fast, then use an EOTech or use you know, a red dot or a T1 or whatever it may be. I think it's nice to just have one and it's nice to finally have a proper solution. And make sure you spend at least 100, 125 on your LPVO, spend a good amount of money on it, get good glass, the quality of glass really does matter and being able to handle zero and being able to not shake around. And if you can get a really good one, being able to illuminate that dot outdoors. But then again, this is, you know, not exactly the most expensive one you can get, but I am really, really, really surprised how good this is. But anyway guys, that's all for today. If you wanna see more videos on Airsoft in Japan, click this video right here.